you were fine before you met her. And you're going to be fine after the situation. But we're, right now, you're tricking your mind into thinking you're not going to be fine. Click the link below and get your tickets to the Game Kings 2, the definition of a man documentary screening that's going to be held in Miami on October 26th, 2024. You'll be the first to watch the documentary, and then after the documentary, you'll be able to participate in a question and answer session with the Game Kings live. Space is limited, so click the link below and get your tickets now. Here's the thing, right? I'm the type of guy. I can be in a relationship with a woman for five years, right? The, the first four years could be beautiful, right? If the last year was shitty, that's the only year I think about. I don't give a fuck about them first four, right? So when a relationship ends, I think about the shitty shit. So I'm not going to miss her. You know what I'm saying? Now, your thing is, and one thing I'll talk about is compatibility, which is existing in harmony with no conflict. Based on what you told me, the harmony was not there, and it was conflict. So you're no longer compatible with this woman. So you're missing superficial shit, okay? At the end of the day, when you have a woman in your life, right? And I said this earlier, she has to go with the flow of what you got going on, not against the grain of it, right? So all you're gonna do, for all you guys that's ever been in a situation where all you do is fuss and argue with your woman, y'all motherfuckers are not compatible, okay? You think, people think it's normal. Oh man, I just heard she going through some shit. No, it's not normal to argue with people, you know what I'm saying? So you're dealing with a woman where you miss her now, there could be some deeper shit other than how she looks, right? And it could be the sex. Who knows what it is, right? Or it could be maybe you're having trouble getting women who were as attractive maybe, and you're wishing, you know? But I'm going to tell you right now, she wasn't good for your brother. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's the bottom line, man. That's the bottom line. Oh, yeah. That's the bottom line. <laughs> <laughs> that's the bottom line, man. That's all you have to think about. Right. I was, I was going to say this. Okay. Um, when, did, when did you meet this woman? Five years, five years ago. Okay. How old are you? I'm 41. 41. Put, put the things to your mouth. Yeah, yeah. 41. So you're 41. So that means that you were living 35 years of life before you met this woman, right? And you were, you were fine, right? So what happens is that you got attached to this situation. The situation's over. You see what I'm saying? So you were fine before you met her, right. and you're going to be fine after the situation, but we're, right now you're tricking your mind into thinking you're not going to be fine. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So what happens is, is that your focus is on you not being fine because you're attached to that situation. As soon as you realize that what you're feeling or what you're you know, uh, uh, paying attention to is an illusion, mm -hmm. then you'll be over it. Because yeah. right now what happens is that your focus is on the fact that you don't like the fact that she's not there. But if you put focus on something else, put focus on your life, put focus on what you're doing, right? That's gonna dissipate and you'll be in another situation that you're focusing on that'll be more positive because you've been focusing on other things 35 years before you even met her and you were fine. So, so the thing is, is that a lot of times we, we, we get in situations where we add things to our lives and then we say, I can't live without there. So now things are messed up because I don't have this thing anymore but you were fine before you got it. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And then it tricks your mind into thinking that you're not gonna be fine after the situation. And just understand that you just have moments in your life, so just enjoy each moment. And so right now you're wasting your moments worrying about something that you think you need in order to be happy, which you don't need that. You see what I'm saying? Hold on, put, let me say this real quick. Enjoy it until it's no longer enjoyable. Right, <laughs> exactly, right. Appreciate you, man. All right. All right. All right. I can take the dick off the table based upon my standard. You aren't gonna get hold of this dick if you ain't being the woman I need you to be. You need to realize that you need to cook, clean. You gotta understand that you're not the only woman. And if you can accept that, that's fine. That's just the beginning. Because you gotta work hard for me. Because I work hard for me. So that means if you, if, if you get with me, it's not gonna be easy street because I need to be satisfied because it ain't no happy wife, happy life bullshit. It's happy Steve, happy Steve. Being strong with self, understanding who you are, um, is the, that is the biggest defense to bitch ass weak men. And there's no excuses for the men not to be strong, but see there's so many forces and then so many men are embracing weakness. I can't stand weak men. Like I don't even, I don't like to talk to them. It's hard for me to talk to these losers. I've always been a winner at the winner's table.
you know, I believe it's a sin to impregnate a woman who can't raise a child, you know, or impregnate a woman who's not fit to be a mother. And I think we have a responsibility in what we see today in these weak ass little feminine boys. I can't tell another man what to do, but I can't dress feminine. I can't wear nail polish. It's just something that I can't do. Why? Because if I'm walking down the street and somebody's having trouble with a flat tire, I want them to feel that they can come to me and ask me, hey man, could you help me out with this? Because those are the type of things that a man will help out with. So I need to look like a man so they can know where to come for help. Yeah, it is such a thing as toxic masculinity in the minds of bitch ass motherfuckers. Talk about masculinity, assertiveness, authenticity, transparency. How can a guy who's straight up and honest with what he does be toxic? If the media can train you to think something bad about it, you hear the word and you want to instantly have a certain reaction. You stop thinking, you start feeling. And when people learn to think, and feel and not think through their feelings, that's when they can evaluate a person holistically. And they can say, is this toxic masculinity or did I just hear something I didn't like? And why did I not like it? And they only let me go within myself to see why. I don't never look at no motherfucker and say, oh, that's a toxic masculine motherfucker. I never ever had, I didn't even know. It. That was an invented concept from a weak motherfucker that was like, I'm just tired of this motherfucker trying to tell me what to do and bully you over me with this bullshit. What's gonna make you successful is just understanding who you are and getting your mind right and being happy with who you are. That is the thing that's gonna really make you successful because after you get all the toys, after you get all these things going on, you've had sex with all the women you wanna have sex with, you traveled all the places, you're still gonna be you and you're gonna always come back to you. Why do I do this? Why are we even doing this documentary? I'm trying to, I want guys to be in the best position possible. There's no way that I'm raising my voice or calling you a bitch ass nigga because I'm trying to hurt your feelings. I'm calling you a bitch ass nigga because you're doing bitch ass nigga shit. And if you continue doing bitch ass nigga shit, you're gonna end up in bitch ass nigga situations. You get what I'm saying? So when I call you a bitch ass nigga, trust me, it's because I love you.